Today our presentation is Warehouse Management Software in the Cloud for Distributors. During the webinar, NetSuite partner Acellos will discuss warehouse optimization strategies that will improve business efficiencies and can improve customer satisfaction. Acellos will also show a demo of their solution and how it's integrated with NetSuite. Now I'd like to introduce the guest speakers today. Our first speaker is Nick Vander Hayden, a product manager uh, at Acellos. Good afternoon to you, Nick. Thank you, Miami. And uh, good morning, afternoon, evening to uh, everybody, depending on where you're at today. I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of Excellos. Well, thank you for that introduction, Nick, and we look forward to your presentation. And uh, next, but not least, uh, Zub Zubair Amla. Uh, good afternoon to you, Zubair. How are you? Good afternoon, Naomi. Thank you for letting us present today. Absolutely. Uh, Zubair, can you take a few moments to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. My name is Zubair Atma. I'm uh, one of the uh, sales engineers at Excellos, primarily focused on our warehouse management solution. So I'll be kind of taking you through a, a brief introduction of the product, and we'll love to uh, chat with each and every one of you on, on specific uh, business process requirements that you have with, with uh, related to your business practices. Well, thank you, Zubair. Thank you for presenting today. We'll look forward to your uh, demo later. Nick, I'm going to hand off the presentation to you. Okay, so thank you, everybody. What we're going to do is just start out by taking a look at some of the options out there if you're out there looking for a solution for your warehouse. Um, just try to differentiate some of the big differences. If you're looking at a barcoding or data collection solution, for example, um, you're going to be dealing with a solution that's going to allow you to keep track of inventory, pick, pack, and ship, and in most cases is going to remove the data entry within your warehouse. It's a simple solution. Uh, it's less expensive. It's good for a smaller warehouse, you know, one to one to five or ten users. And uh, generally, that's where the barcoding solution stops, and the full-featured or Excellos WMS solution is going to pick up. Um, these terms, uh, full-featured or best of breed, are generally interchangeable. They help describe a system that has uh, a wider breadth of functionality, some of the latest and greatest features. Um, Excellus is a thought leader within WMS with over 1,000 customers. Um, so our system is built with far more features right out of the box. Uh, it means you don't have to pay for more high, you know, highly complex integrations. Um, you can basically utilize checkboxes to add or subtract the certain functionalities that you need. And we also price based on this functionality, so you're looking at more of a value-based pricing model. This is going to allow you to have the features that you need at a price that makes sense now, and it's going to allow you to scale for growth over time. Um, like I said, we have over 1,000 WMS customers in a variety of industries, so we've seen a lot over the years, and in order for us to um, activate certain functionalities for you, generally we don't have to build it. We just have to, uh, like I said, checkbox it and um, activate it for you. Um, generally, our system can be up and running within 90 days. This is a huge advantage over the enterprise solutions. They're far more expensive. They're geared towards warehouses with hundreds of users. And this solution is generally very customizable, but the customizations are very expensive, and the, uh, you'll be paying a much higher implementation uh, for this type of a solution. Um, so it's generally a good bet for... Uh, warehouse, a much larger warehouse with many more users, and uh, most likely you're not going to be up within 90 days. So the simplest way to look at it is really how complex your warehouse is and how many users you have in your warehouse. If you have more than 10 and you require relatively complex features on top of bar basic barcoding, then you're going to want to look into a full-featured system. So we'll kind of get more in-depth here into some of the specific features. As you'll see, a barcoding solution is going to have your pick, pack, and ship, data collection, but it's not going to have rules-based processes. You're not going to have dashboard analytics. It's limited in its functionality, and generally, depending on where your business is at, this is going to be a bottleneck to your growth in the warehouse. A full feature is going to give you real-time inventory visibility. You're going to have dashboard analytics. You're gonna, we're going to have rules that help you optimize your space and help optimize your labor, your pick processes. We have wave and batch picking. 
and your shipping costs are going to go down significantly by being able to rate shop right directly from a handheld. You're going to know when to reorder inventory with replenishment. Your put-away paths are optimized and directed. And on top of all this, especially for all you drop shippers and B2C businesses out there, your EDI and your ASN mandates can be tied into your outbound order fulfillment. And this is going to cut down on, again, a lot of manual data entry. And it's going to really streamline your warehouse and your processes and save you money. And all this can be deployed on-premise, or it can be deployed in the cloud, depending on what works best for you. We'll talk a bit, little bit later about how you're going to save money by doing this in the cloud. Most of our customers experience ROI within 4 to 12 months. And listed here are some of your opportunities to become a, much more efficient in the warehouse, more productive and less wasteful. You're going to experience ROI by increasing your order accuracy. If you're paper picking right now, you probably understand, um, you know, that you're having a certain uh, percentage of mistakes going on in your warehouse. But with, with handheld scanners, you're going to be up to 99.9% because .9 it's really not possible to pick the wrong product uh, when you're dealing with barcoding and scanners. You're going to improve your efficiency by optimizing your labor. It's going to allow you to move more orders throughout your warehouse without increasing staff. To save money on shipping by, again, being able to rate shop multiple carriers right from the handheld. And if you deploy in the cloud, you reduce your on-premise IT labor, your hardware, your operating system. You don't have the capital expenditures of your servers. Um, you have security risks, network costs, maintenance costs. So it's a huge relief to be able to focus on your core business and not have to manage your IT. And that's a big reason why you're all NetSuite customers to begin with. So it's a huge relief, and your uptime with the cloud deployment is over 99.5%. So you can, again, just be sure to save on any unforeseen costs of your systems being down. Your upgrades and your maintenance are built into your subscription cost, meaning you don't have to pay extra for them over time. It's much more predictable, and you're always running on the latest version of the software. So having crystal clear inventory accuracy is also going to help you sell more orders. You're not going to be sold out as often. When something comes in on the dock and you scan it, it's already showing as inventory online. Um, it's allowing you to sell more orders and, again, not have any false out of stocks. Um, and your carrying costs can be much lower because you'll know when to replenish. You can set your replenishment rates and have these um, happen automatically. And you're also getting orders out the door faster because you have a leaner and faster warehouse staff. And this is going to increase your customer satisfaction and return your investment on purchasing a WMS product. So looking at your total cost of ownership, we have aggregated some common customer experiences and found there are significant advantages to the cloud. First off, if you're purchasing the software outright, and you want to run it on-premise, you obviously have a much higher software cost right away. You also have a much higher training cost because you have to get your IT department on board. They need to learn how to implement the software, train your employees. You have to pay the IT admin, purchase the hardware, the operating systems. In the cloud model, you just have a subscription payment, which allows you to save by not having to manage your infrastructure. And it also takes the burden out of purchasing that software up front and it includes all the upgrades and maintenance. So you have much more peace of mind in the fact that you're running a more predictable uh, model. You always have the latest version of the software. And um, implementation is relatively similar in both, both models. But as you can see, the cloud is going to save you money in the long run. You're going to be running the most recent version, which is going to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest functionality. And um, it's not going to cost you anything extra to be receiving those upgrades. These are some of our joint Excellos and NetSuite customers. We've been a partner since 2011, and we've done um, six deals this year, actually. There's one more uh, image solutions, which I don't have here. Uh, but Bayless and Harding, Alex, Alex and Alexa is a children's uh, clothing company, Christian Art Gifts. Um, we have Ice Cream Depot and Ice Cream equipment distributor, and Lug is a bag distributor out of Canada. So these are all deals that we've closed this year, and we're putting a lot of energy 
into the NetSuite arena, and we uh, are highly looking forward to working with some of you guys as well. So uh, this is a closer look at Bayless and Harding. They're in the bath and body market, both direct to consumer and through distribution and retail. Their direct to consumer business is a small but growing segment of, of their operation. Probably a lot of you out there can relate to that. <coughs> they use Excellus to automate the receiving process from contract manufacturers and to efficiently drive the processes throughout the warehouse. They're a privately owned company. They have about 12 users, and they produce all sorts of luxury bath and body items. So, um, as you can see, we went three months to go live with Bayless. This was a big project, but 90 days or less is what we generally work on for an implementation. Uh, they have a 150,000 square foot facility, and they're smaller than some of our customers, but larger than others. Like I said, um, some of them are down to five users if you're scaling for growth and planning on growing in the next couple of years. And uh, they're on the cusp of being able to use this technology now to grow their business substantially without adding any staff. Uh, things are working out really well for Bayless. And I'll tell you a little bit about Excellos. We are the market leading publisher of end-to-end -end supply chain solutions, specifically built for the mid-tier market. We did $40 million in revenue in 2012. We have over 200 employees and 3,000 customers running our solutions, over 1,000 running our WMS. This makes us one of the largest supply chain software publishers serving the mid-market. We're in over 20 countries with a footprint in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Eastern Europe, and Latin America. And we hold a couple of events each year. One is our annual version of Sweet World, where we get every, all of our customers together to learn the latest and greatest um, in, our, in our product, and also have an event uh, each year in Colorado Springs where our partners come to learn about our new solutions. And that's constantly keeping us growing our partner base and continuing to keep our partners up to speed. We also have a 16% annual investment in product engineering, which is uh, higher than the higher than the industry average. So we continue to innovate and continue to create the latest functionality. Gartner is the preeminent supply chain analyst, and they have recently released a report called the 2013 Magic, WMS Magic Quadrant, and uh, as you can see, we focus on the needs of the small to mid-sized business uh, more than our competitors, and some nice quotes here showing that we focus on the ease of use, minimize time to value, and low total cost of ownership, and they also highlight how we specifically design for the mid-market. On the graph on the left, you can see how we're positioned above some of our competitors there. Um, and in the quadrant that serves small to mid-sized business. Of those companies, we are rated significantly higher in our ability to execute. You can see Softion, Logfire, eBizNet, and SnapFulfill in the bottom red circle and Excellus on the top. We're focused on wholesale distribution, and within wholesale, we have a diverse set of customers. You can see them here. We also have many customers in food and beverage, industrial supply, medical, and pharmaceutical. And this is our diverse set of detail customers. And uh, I'd specifically like to call it Christian Art Gifts in the lower left-hand corner. They recently, they joined the Excellus family when they were doing just under $2 million in annual revenue and have since grown their business to over $25 million in sales. And they've recently decided to switch their ERP to NetSuite and they're going to be a stellar Excellus Net, NetSuite reference by the end of the year. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things over to Zubair, and Zubair is going to show you how NetSuite and Excellus are seamlessly integrated and feature some of the functionality. Take it away, Zubair. Thanks, Nick. Sharing my computer here, so we should be all... I take it you all can see my screen. Um, if someone could just confirm with me, that would be great. Nick? Yep. Yep, awesome. we can see you there. So what I want to do is just at least give you an orientation of the Excellos One look and feel. One of the things that you'll notice is the Excellos One uh, application is has essentially two different user interface. And really what we call our, our user interface is, uh, is Workspace, which is really the platform or the window into your supply chain functionality offered by Excellos. So 
And not only do we offer the warehouse management uh, aspect, but there's a number of additional modules uh, that can be purchased a la carte or as part of a, a supply chain suite uh, to address your requirements. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those additional functionalities as, as you're looking to implement a warehouse solution and how they, they could be used in the context of a distribution environment. So uh, what I'm going to do here is this, uh, I've got an assistant already logged in, but you have a, a username and password to log into the system. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is you can actually log into NetSuite right within the Excelos application as well. So if you've got certain users that need to access information within NetSuite, I've just put in a, a, a page here that allows me to look into NetSuite it, itself. But essentially every user that logged into the, to the system is logged in and under a specific role inside of Workspace. And these roles can be predefined or tailored to a specific user. Uh, so if a user has permissions, they can essentially build their own version of workspace to accommodate their, their daily routines. In this instance, I'm logged in as a warehouse manager, uh, and I open up my workspace to a set of KPIs that reflect warehouse performance. Uh, so on this tab here, essentially, uh, shows me different uh, analytics related to warehouse performance. So not only does uh, do we give you real-time visibility of inventory, but you've got visibility into uh, supply chain anal analytics. Uh, really, what you know, more important than daily reports is the ability for manage management to monitor the health of, of your supply chain operations. So you might want to look at you know how you're measuring up against performance objectives uh, set out by your executive team. Uh, you know, are you meeting the operational service level objective, uh, objective excuse me, of your operations? Uh, are warehouse employees performing up to your standards? You know, how are you performing against industry standards? So really the analytics provides you some e immediate feedback as to how your operation is performing in the rear view mirror and also allow you to make decisions quickly to, to make uh, to respect the performance metrics or improvement actions related to your warehouse operations. Um, in addition to the analytics, many of our customers uh, leverage dashboards to keep their employees motivated. So you'll find LCD panels, for example, in warehouses showing warehouse performance metrics by in, in individual employees. So in this case here, for example, if I want to look at uh, you know, pick lines by user. I want to expand that analytics so I can certainly do so. It really allows you to give, you know, persist this information out to your user base on a flat panel monitor, and they can see what they're looking at from, you know, against their fellow employees within, you know, whether it's picking or receiving or depending on, obviously, the function that they're doing in their warehouse. Okay. You also have the ability to uh, export this information, for example, to uh, Excel or Word, so if there's uh, specific information that you want to, uh, you know, capture and, and look at this in, in more detail, you can take any one of the grids, look at the raw data, and of course export that Excel, Word, et cetera, depending on, you know, which tools that you might be comfortable with and want to leverage in your environment. Okay, so those are different tools that you have uh, available to you uh, within, within the environment. Okay. And my Internet Explorer has crashed. Uh, we're going to have to log in again. Apologize for that. We'll just, so we'll log in with our username and password. And once you log in here, like I said, depending on your role tailored view, you'll have a number of things that uh, you know pop up on the screen here in terms of you know, what functions are available to a, a specific user. Okay, so I'm just going to go once again, go back to my performance tab, and we'll pull up our, our performance. So on the left side here, it essentially gives you all the modules that are available to a specific user. So what we're looking at is our uh, warehouse performance metrics. And if I just pull that up on the screen, that will show me the various metrics that I just pulled up on the, on the screen here, uh, you know, that I was, I was showing you earlier. Uh, you can define your own KPI, so if there's specific metrics that you're looking for within your environment, you can certainly, uh, you know, create your own. 
out of the box that ships with about 40 or 50 industry standard key performance indicators that you can certainly leverage within your operations. On the bottom here, you'll notice I've got a number of different tabs. Each one of these tabs represents uh, you know, different types of information depending on, you know, what I've got set up. So this is something that I've set up as a specific user. Uh, so, you know, uh, you can then persist this across your user uh, base or if there's certain pages that you want to make, give access to your users, uh, you can certainly do so depending on the screen that they're uh, logged into uh, for their specific function or task related to their function. So if I just go back over to my uh, operations tab here, for example, this gives me information on specific information. So for example, I'm highlighted the inventory work center. So this gives you visibility into all your inventory that you have in your warehouse. Things like, you know, the, the specific bin location that the product is in. So one of the things that we'll do is provide multi-bin capabilities inside of the application so you'll know exactly where the items are within your warehouse, obviously the description of the product, the quantity that you have in each location, what warehouse it's in. It supports things like multiple zones. So where that might come into play, for example, is if you're a food and beverage distributor and you've got different areas in the warehouse, one related to you know maybe a dry goods area, another related to uh, frozen or refrigerated uh, uh, areas. You want to segregate your warehouse into different zones. You may have different picking methodologies or different material handling equipment that's required to pick in different parts of your warehouse. So that's where you might utilize something like zoning out your warehouse. We've got a number of customers, for example, that use automation equipment, right? So if you're using anything like carousels or conveyors, pick to light and divert within your operations, we can certainly integrate and control those different aspects of your, your operations by leveraging some of the configuration options that are available uh, within within the WMS. Okay. So uh, what, as I mentioned to you earlier, the order uh, management or the order work center is really the, um, is, is what your warehouse manager or supervisor would use to action the orders in the, in the, in the warehouse. This is what they would use to you know, prioritize their orders, build waves of orders, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is just hop over to NetSuite and show you how that information then translates to uh, down from NetSuite into the WMS and how we post that information back up to uh, up into NetSuite. So your transactions from a from a um, from a um, process standpoint inside of NetSuite really wouldn't change. You would enter in your orders as you would uh, normally within NetSuite. All the information, whether it's coming through EDI or, you know, you're manually inputting this in or if it's coming through your e-commerce site would come in through NetSuite. Obviously, you would have all your uh, item information as it relates to how much a customer has ordered and the quantity that they've ordered on a specific order. So we'll just put in an order here for uh, a couple of items here. Um, and we'll order two of these guys here. You may have specific shipping related information, so you might want to pass down. Obviously, we'll, we can pass down the, the carrier information down in terms of who it's being shipped by, the shipping method. Okay, that's all passed down to uh, the WMS. As soon as I hit uh, save uh, this order here, that information then is transferred down to the Excel plus one system in real time, and you have the ability to determine how often you want the order information to go from NetSuite down to the warehouse system. Okay, so if I just click over here and just refresh my screen here, you'll see that the order then shows up in here. Uh, order number 668 that we just entered into NetSuite shows up here, and it's a status called ready to wave. It essentially means it's ready to be picked in the warehouse. You'll notice on the left-hand side here, I've got a number of different statuses related to orders. Okay, so we've got about 15 to 20 different statuses that you can have, things like, you know, orders that are waiting to be released, orders that are released. So if you uh, understand the concept of waving or cluster picking, for example, you can have multiple, you can have an order pick multiple orders at the same time in your warehouse, for example. On the, every screen that you look at has a search panel that allows you to filter out information as required by a specific user. So really think of this page as an electronic version of your manual pick documents or pick slips that you have in the warehouse, and you have the ability to sort, filter, 
orders based on whatever criteria that you that you de you seem appropriate. So, for example, I may want to look at all my orders uh, by the status of, of the orders in my warehouse. If I just group that here, I can see exactly which orders are being picked. And uh, you know, if I, if I want to look at the details, we have things like log reports that will show you details in terms of you know who's actually picking that order. Okay, at what date and time they started picking that order. So. You know, there's a lot of detailed information related to every single order in the system, and uh, everything is date, time, user, and action stamp. So you can see literally up to the second all the different uh, transactions related to that specific order. On the top here, you've got different header level information as it relates to your orders, uh, and you can see there's an abundance of fields that you have available to you to sort and select orders by you know, things like zones and who it's being shipped to. Uh, you know how it's being shipped, etc. Um, you know the more information that you pass back from, pass from NetSuite to the WMS, the more it gives your operations team to sort and filter on and determine you know which orders in, are in what priority. You can have assigned priority codes to to customers. Obviously, depending on how you have it set up, one could be a high priority, or or it could be you know uh, you know nine, for example, could be a higher priority over over one or vice versa. So you've got some. Uh, flexibility in terms of how you how you leverage the priority codes uh, within the system here, and then I, you can also create custom filters. So, for example, if I want to see, you know, my it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I know my UPS truck is is going to show up. I want to make sure I want to process all my UPS orders for the day. I can filter out all my orders by UPS and see exactly which orders I need to process, uh, you know, and and in my warehouse and make sure that they're pick packed and stage for my UPS pickup, okay? And that could, you can get as, as granular as you like in terms of how you process these orders. So in this case here, I just want to see all my orders that I have for today. That was the order that we have. On the bottom here, for example, I can look at the order line details and see exactly, you know, what's been ordered and also the shipment details on those specific orders. In the warehouse, uh, the folks that are actually on the floor would be using a barcode scanning device. And once again, they're all using a username and password to log into the system. Uh, and what you'll see here is really all the common functions that you would you know, expect the warehouse management system to have on the handheld device. Each one of these menu options, once again, can be configured in terms of who has access to those different types of functions. If I click on any one of these functions, you have access to a number of additional options on the handheld device. And you can see there's just an abundance of, of options. So for example, if I go into picking, there's a number of different types of, of picking methods. So if you're, for example, doing a lot of B2B shipments, you know, you may do a different type of picking method all where you're doing, you know, as opposed to uh, a BTC. And it seems like a lot of folks on the webinar today are doing e-commerce fulfillment. And typically, whether you're doing it off your website or you're doing a drop ship, you know, a lot of those orders are onesie, twosie types of types of orders, and there's different picking strategies available to you depending on the the material equipment, material handling equipment that you have, and also the the complexity of your order types and your order volume. So you you know, depending on the on the option that you pick on the handheld, would drive a different workflow within your operations as it relates to picking. So what I'm going to do is just go into what we call a regular picking or, or what some would consider wave or cluster picking, which is really one of the most common methods in, in, a, a, um, in, a, in a pick, pack, and ship environment where you're shipping one or two cartons to, to your customers with you know, multiple line items on that order. You can also do things like what we call zone picking. Uh, some of you may have flow rack that where you're picking on, on, on conveyor, for example, and you have folks that are working on different parts of that flow rack, and you may zone that out in your warehouse and have pickers logged into a specific area or zone, and they're only directed to picks within that specific area or zone that they define in. There's a multitude of ways of, of how you can assign orders and, and, and pick orders. You can even do things like create wave plans and and assign waves. So one of the uh, one of the capabilities when, from the software is the ability for for example is to create or batch orders together. You may be doing B two B fulfillment, for example, where you need to print out compliance labels for some of the big box retailers. So the system can automatically, depending on the customer that's shipping to, for example, 
print out your GS1 or UCC128 labels required for a specific order. And you can see here, for example, some of the label formats that I have. So a lot of our customers will pre-print those labels in advance of picking the order. And that comes in handy, for example, if you're shipping to uh, a number of cases to, uh, you know, for Walmart or Target, for example, where they require you to label each each case on an order. And specifically, if you're doing a lot of their, uh, you know, uh, you're shipping to store, but that, excuse me, you're marking the order, the cases for a store, but you're shipping to a DC. So every single case on that may require a different type of label. So one of the systems can do, it, for example, is be able to sort your labels by bin sequence. So you might select all your orders that are shipping to Target to this to a DC, but there's you know 50 different stores on that on that one shipment. Right, the system can automatically pre-print those labels for you. So you, when your pickers go out to pick those cases, they're actually going out with the labels in hand and scanning the case and the label associated to that. Uh, to that specific uh, customer and, and correlating that ASN information on the fly as they're picking. In this case here, I'm just going to do a very simple uh, pick transaction. So I'm going to just select the order from my list. You can go in and assign an order and look at what work's been, you know, been assigned to you. Some customers just want the, the picker to go into the queue, for example, and say, show me the next order in the queue and just start picking that. If they've got some priority codes, obviously the higher priority order would go into the top of the queue, uh, depending on the, the requirement. So just for demo purposes here, I'm going to select the order. It gives me the order information. I'm going to say, yeah, that's the order that I want to pick. And in this case, what we'll do is actually pick multiple orders simultaneously. So as a single picker, I'm going to pick multiple orders. So it's telling me I've got two orders in my in my work queue, uh, you know, the, uh, how many lines, units, et cetera, for that second order. And if I want to grab another order, I can. But what I'm going to do here is just start picking those two orders simultaneously. Okay, so I go out with my pick cart, for example. I may have a tote or a carton. And what we essentially will do is print out unique uh, serial labels for each carton or tote, okay? And that will identify the order instead of having to use a paper pick document. And the pickers then are directed to a specific bin location, and the system will allocate the product based on your FIFO parameters. For those that are in the food and beverage industry, you may have expiry date requirements where the customer may not accept product within X number of days to expiry. Those are different parameters that the system can then decide where we're actually going to pick or pull the inventory from based on your customer requirements. And I'd love to talk to you about those in a lot more detail. What I'm going to do is go to my bin location. I scan the product. It could be your item number. It could be your UPC number. It could be your manufacturer's item number. You can have as many cross-references to a specific item. So essentially what you're doing is going in and scanning the product and now scanning the carton that that product is related to, so the tote that we're picking this item into. Some of our customers uh, that are leveraging our integrated shipping system may also do things like pre-print their UPS or FedEx labels in advance of picking. So imagine you've got your weights and cubes of your items. You're using standard box sizes. The system can automatically determine what box size you need to use. Pre-print your, your carrier labels in advance of picking. So your pickers are essentially going out with their cartons on their, on their pick carts with their UPS or FedEx label or uh, USPS label already assigned to that carton, and the, the picker is just scanning the product and scanning the UPS label associated or, or uh, FedEx label associated to those specific cartons. So here I'm just going to scan the, or enter in the quantity that I'm picking for that order. Okay, now it's moving me to the next bin location to say, hey, go start picking this, uh, you know, that's the next item on the order that needs to be picked. If I just go into the background here and refresh my orders, here, you can see that they're actually being picked right now, right? So you can see they moved from a uh, ready-to-wave status to being picked. So you know in real time exactly who's picking what order at any given time. Um, you know, and we're, we're maintaining all those details for you, uh, you know, by, by order, by user, by action stamp within the, uh, you know, within the warehouse management solution, okay? And then if I just scroll to the bottom here, for example, uh, you know, and look at my order line details, you can see exactly what items have been picked on that order at any given time. So if I just scroll that here, okay, I can see 
this one's been picked. This one obviously is, hasn't been picked yet, but you know exactly where we're going to go pick this BlackBerry Playbook Club for this specific order. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go in. I'm going to scan my uh, BlackBerry Playbook. If I scan the wrong item, the system's not going to let me move forward, so we're building in validation as part of the, the pick process to ensure that we're picking the right product for the right customer or for the right order. Okay. So this is one carton. Oops. Okay. And we're validating the quantity I put into that carton. Okay. You'll notice that it's it's asking me for the same product, but it's a different order number here. Okay, so this is the, the carton or the tote related to a, another order. So in this case here, for example, if I look at the shipment details, this is tote number 173 for this order, and this is a, another order okay, uh, that shows me the shipment details related to that specific order as well. Okay. So once again, I'm going to scan my carton. Okay, oops. This is why you're scanning and not typing in a in a manual environment. So uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, I know my writing uh, isn't the best, so a lot of you that are in a manual environment are typically going out with a piece of paper, marking up the piece of paper, of, you know, how much was picked on an order. If you need to short it, you're crossing it out, may put red ink on it. Eventually that piece of paper makes its way up to the front office where someone needs to input that information into NetSuite. What we're doing is capturing all that information on the fly. And what we're essentially also doing is building your EDI information on the fly as well, right? So if you've got customers that require carton or pallet level details, the system is automatically capturing that for you. So if I go under my shipment details here, for example, in this case here, I've only got, uh, you know, one carton on that order, but if I had multiple cartons, I'd be able to see exactly what's been picked on that specific order. So in this case here, in this carton, you can see I picked the, the BlackBerry Playbook and the, uh, you know, whatever the printer was for this specific carton. So I know exactly which tote or carton that item is related to or that order is related to. So I may need to go through a shipping. I'm going through a, a shipment uh, process here. A lot of our customers will just use the handheld device and actually process the shipment right from the handheld. So I can go into our shipping function, for example, go into the carton shipping. We can integrate into a scale. So you can put that box onto a scale. Obviously, I don't have a scale in, in my in my demo environment here, so I'm just going to do a, a manual shipment. So once again, I just scan the the carton to validate that I'm you know shipping that specific carton, and then if you're integrated in a scale, it'll automatically capture the the weight. As soon as I capture the weight, okay, what what will happen is your uh, you know UPS or your FedEx label will automatically print out right from the uh, the printer assigned to that specific user that performed that specific uh, action. Okay. Alternatively, uh, you may need to rate shop an order, for example. Okay. We've got uh, the ability for you to go in and actually rate shop orders as well. So in this case here, for example, I may look up, uh, you know, all my orders and I may want to uh, see, you know, I want to I want to manually rate shop my orders. So I'm just going to grab uh, an order here, for example, um, and and rate, you know, manually rate shop it. So in this case here, uh, I've got my uh, you know order information pulled up here. I've got different carriers, so you can set up different rate shop groups. Uh, you know, maybe you want to shop all your next day air carriers. Maybe you want to shop uh, all your um, you know all your LTL carriers, for example. So you can set up different rate shop groups to depending on the customer and the order uh, that that you've got in the system. So in this case here, I'm just going to select my, you know, ground carriers here, and I want to say, you know, I want to get all my rates for that. Oops, I need to select the shipper here. So you might have multiple shipping accounts, okay? And that will then go out, find what the, you know, what the different uh, prices are for the carriers, and now it's telling me it's $9.75 for FedEx, and nine dollars and seventy nine cents per ground, and I can select which carrier that I want to, uh, you know, that I want to process process it through. I can select the carrier, and it'll automatically then print out my my carrier uh, labels for that specific shipment. And I just hit ready to ship, 
can ship it, and that then produces my, my shipping label, and it processes the shipment, passes all the information back up to NetSuite in terms of, you know, the track and trace number and the cost related to that, uh, to that shipment. What we'll also do is give you history if you wanted to. Uh, so if I wanted to look up some history information related to all those orders, I can certainly do so. So there's a, a number of different work centers that we have. So I can look at all the orders that have been sent back up to NetSuite. In this example, I'll just go back into NetSuite and look at the details uh, for that specific order that we just processed in the warehouse. Okay, so if I just go into my uh, NetSuite, uh, NetSuite instance, okay, that will then close out the order and actually create your, uh, you know, your related documents uh, related to a specific shipment. Okay, so when I look at my related records here. Oops, that's the wrong order. Pull up an order here. Uh, okay, there's my item fulfillment that it created inside of NetSuite. Okay, and I can see the details that was picked for that specific order. Okay, so it automatically creates your fulfillment transaction inside of NetSuite. It was shipped via UPS, for example. The cost of the shipment, etc., would be passed back up to uh, up to NetSuite. Uh, you know, related to that to that specific order. Okay, that was a very simple uh, workflow that we went through. There's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, specific transactions that we can go through in terms of you know optimizing your pick path based on you know maybe if you got for example in the in the food and distribution food and beverage in industry you may want to optimize your your picking uh, from heavy to lightest. Okay, so you've got a lot of different. Uh, functionality that's related to a specific order. Uh, there's obviously things like uh, receipts that you can process through the handheld. I showed you some of the, the receipt transactions that are available to you. So if, if you've got things like ASNs that you can bring in from your uh, from your vendors, you have the ability to, do, to process transactions using ASN on the handheld as well. Obviously, full cycle counting capability. We've got what we call a directed count function where you can go in and schedule cycle counts. Maybe you want to schedule, you know, all your A moving products every 30 days, all your B moving products every 90 days, and, you know, anything after that maybe, you know, twice a year. So you can then schedule that and that, that goes into our directed count queue. Uh, if you've got an issue with your products, a specific product, you obviously have the ability to cycle count by product or by bin, and then obviously things like a full physical inventory count within the within the operations. You also have things like the ability to print out labels. So you know some of you may want to print out uh, just simple barcode labels. You've got the ability to do that right from the handheld device. Things like price tickets, packing slips that can automatically be printed out based on different uh, configuration options. So we'd love to talk to you about some of the details that are related to all the different functionality on the handheld. As you can see, there's just an abundance of options, uh, and each one of these will, are, are related to different configuration options, uh, you know, as it relates to different industries um, that, that we work with. So I will uh, end with that, and if there's any specific questions, I'd love to address them. Naomi, I will pass it back to you. Thank you, Zubair, for your demo. That was that was great. I think it gave uh, our customer, NetSuite customers, an example the power, the flexibility, and the customization that are uh, that is available. So, with that, I'm going to jump into the uh, to the Q and A. If you have any questions, please type them into the right hand side of your panel, um, and we'll get to those as soon as we can. Um, and I'm going to start off with uh, the first question. Um, um, Zubair, I think you you showed this, but um, I'll I'll, I'll um, ask the question uh, anyhow. Do you have integrated shipping system? Yes, that, that was one of the things that we were talking about. There's a multitude of ways of, of how we do integrated shipping, uh, but uh, that's one of I think uh, the uh, the pillars that um, Nick had talked about earlier was just having that flexibility of of being able to have multiple uh, multiple uh, ways to ship an order. 
Great, thank you. Um, uh, Nick, one, this one's for you. How long has the company been in business? I know that you mentioned that in the beginning, so if you just want to review yeah, that. Yeah, so the great. company's been in business since 2006, but the product itself uh, actually has been around since 1992. We can talk about the details, but Excellos acquired a company uh, which was in business since 92, so the product's been around. I myself was part of that acquisition uh, and uh, we've got a number of customers that have been running it since then, uh, obviously upgrading uh, year over year. And since the acquisition of Excellos, we've uh, revamped the product, we've uh, re-architected it, and, and continue to add features year over year. Great. Thank you, Zubair. Uh, next question. Uh, this is about uh, fit. Uh, do you fit in large enterprise accounts, e.g. companies $1 billion and above? Absolutely. We've got, uh, you know, a little company, for example, that makes batteries called Energizer. I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. Uh, they're, you know, they're a pretty large worldwide company. They, they're using it in one of their operations. Companies like Pandora Jewelry, which is, uh, you know, six or seven billion dollars, I think, in annual revenue. Um, and, uh, and a whole list of others that, that are in that billion dollars and above. Uh, it really just depends on the complexities related to the operations, whether or not, uh, you know, uh, what we've got from a, from a solution perspective for you. All right. Thank you. Is RF required, or can you leverage any of the directed put-away or pick logic with a paper process? Uh, the pick logic, uh, absolutely. Uh, you can do it with using a paper. Uh, the directed put-away is really dependent on an RF device. So there are some functions that we can do, like receiving, uh, you know, to, to generic locations and, 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 and define the pick logics using pieces of paper. Uh, but the directed put-away is really uh, dependent on an RF device. Okay. Um, what type of barcode scanner uh, can be used? Uh, we're pretty agnostic to the types of barcode scanning devices. There's obviously uh, a few that uh, that are become kind of industry standards, uh, but we've got customers that use the gamut in terms of barcode scanning devices. Typically, we would recommend something that's ruggedized. Uh, folks like Motorola, Intermac, DataLogix, uh, Dolphins, etc., are are ones that we would see in a in a distribution type of environment. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Zubair, this is a follow-up to one question that was a asked, and the first question was a asked was, do you fit in large enterprise accounts, uh, companies over a billion and above, which you did answer that, and the follow-up is 3PLs. Absolutely, that's, uh, that's a great question. Absolutely, we've got a, a, a number of customers that are actually diving, uh, you know, they've They've streamlined their operations so much that they've actually started, uh, you know, they've got excess capacity in the warehouses, so they've, they've opened up 3PL operations, or we've got strict 3PL distributors as well. One of the things that obviously we didn't get into uh, are things like um, we've got an integrated billing module for customers that are in the 3PL industry, so obviously you're, you're performing tasks and, and billing them based on the labor based on storage, uh, you know, value-added services that you're performing on behalf of those clients. So we've got a billing engine that automatically calculates those those costs based on the prices that you have with your specific clients, and then we would feed that information up to NetSuite. So then you can then, you know, uh, invoice them, do your AR, AP, etc. But all the transactions that are performed within our application, and that application could be used both in a distribution environment. Uh, and a, and a third-party logistics environment. And there's a whole list of other functionality that's related to 3PLs. Would love to talk to you about things like client visibility that that's critical in that, in those types of operations. Great, thank you. Uh, lots of questions coming in. Just keep them coming. These are are great questions. Uh, next question is: Which EDI servicers uh, does Acellos have integration with? We've integrated with many EDI uh, service providers. Um, in the NetSuite realm, I'd have to do a bit more research. I know we've got a partnership, for example, with SPS Commerce uh, that leverages data within our application. Uh, we've, the way we've architected our solution is we've built uh, the way we've, uh, you know, when you pick, pack, and ship the orders in the WMS, we're, we're capturing all the ASN information. It really is dependent on the EDI 
systems to, to pull that data uh, from our tables, uh, from our specific ASN tables that we've already captured for you automatically as part of the pick and pack process. So, uh, you know, we, we can certainly talk about the specifics if, there, if there's ones that you're working with. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, next question, Zubera, is about uh, module cost breakdown. Um, I'm not sure. sure how specific you want to go into that or if you want to file, follow up with the individual direct, directly. Yeah, that really is dependent on which modules and additional software you're going with and, you know, what functionality that you're looking uh, to implement. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to have that discussion one-on-one -on -one and, and talk about, you know, what the costs associated are for uh, for the different functionality that you're looking for. Okay, great. That's fair. Um, and next question, does each handheld device require a NetSuite license? No. So uh, we, we just require one night NetSuite license, uh, but the functionality in terms of the handhelds, et cetera, are, all reside within the Excelos platform. All right, and uh, does each Acellos WMS user need to have uh, to also be a full NetSuite user? No. So like I said, we just require one user license for uh, for the integration touch points, and then the Excelos uh, has its own licensing specific to your warehouse operations team. So your pickers, packers, receivers, material handlers within your warehouse would be require an Excelos license. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, next question. Lots of great questions. Just keep them coming. We'll, we'll keep it going in as much uh, as uh, five minutes after the hour if they keep on coming in. Um, does a large number of unique SKUs impact performance of anything else? If yes, what do we? What do you consider a cutoff? No, not necessarily. We've got customers that got uh, you know thousands of SKUs. Uh, specifically, if you look at uh, you know apparel customers, right? Uh, they've got, uh, they've probably got the, one of our largest SKU counts because every item comes in, you know, red, blue, yellow, green, but then it also comes in extra small, small, medium, large, uh, XL, et cetera, et cetera. So their SKU counts are typically fairly large. So, and we've got a, a pretty significant a customer base in that apparel industry. Uh, so uh, it doesn't necessarily impact the, the performance uh, what, what we would want to talk to you about is really the, the amount of shipments that you're doing and, and your labeling requirements is really where, uh, you know, we, we talk about how we can scale the, 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 the application to, to ensure that you get up, up, uh, uptime of, you know, less than, less than 100 milliseconds, especially for those folks that are out on the warehouse floor, any delay on the handheld uh, you know, when they're picking or, or receiving or doing a stock movement impacts their job. So we'd like to have a sub-second sub response time for those types of users. Great. Thank you. Um, next question. Do you need a, a third-party service for the rate shopping and shipping integration, or is it native? Nope. It's, a, it's, a, it's native to Excelos. We've got a couple of, as I mentioned, a couple of different uh, shipping uh, methodologies, just to me depending on your requirements, uh, and it is an Excelos module that's uh, that's native to Excelos. And uh, a follow-up to that question: uh, Do you need to have an account with the shipper um, to um, have those rates appear? Well, you could use their, you could just use their standard posted rates. Uh, mm -hmm. But typically, you would need an account, so you, you know, you're getting billed for uh, for the shipping. Or if you're using third-party billing, obviously your third-party uh, account number, so you can build them automatically, which we support as well. Okay, great. Does the Cellos require a concurrent web services or regular license? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that question? Uh, do you require a concurrent web services or regular license? I believe it's a regular license. I'll have to just double check with our team. So, uh, uh, you know, we can certainly, uh, whoever's asking that question, feel free to reach out to Nick or, Nick or I and we can get you the specifics. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a one specific user for NetSuite. Okay. Uh, next question. How do you interface with NetSuite in batch or real time? If through API, what kind of performance have you experienced? It's real time. Uh, and it's you can have it 
you know, every second, every five seconds, every hour, every two hours. It really just depends on the client's requirement uh, in terms of how often you want to send the data back and forth. Okay. And in terms of performance, we've got a number of customers that, that can, you know, we would love to get you in touch with, but they haven't had any performance-related issues in terms of, uh, you know, uh, data going back and forth between the applications. Got it. Uh, Zubair, this, one, this question might be for an on-premise uh, solution. Do you provide the hosting for your solution or host it somewhere else? If you host, what is uptime in percent? Uh, it is it, it is uh, hosted externally, um, and uh, the uptime is you know 99.95 percent. I think is is the service contract that that we've got. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty uh, pretty high in terms of the uptime and performance that we have with our uh, with our uh, with our cloud deployment. Great, thank you. Um, again, uh, if you have questions, please type it in the Q&A panel, um, and we'll, we'll keep it going after the top of the hour. Um, next question, we process a number of orders that have over a 1,000 lines in NetSuite. Does this present a challenge to you? No, uh, I don't think that, that should be an issue. Like I said, the only, the only issue that uh, you may see is just it, depending on the type of environment that you're running in, uh, you know, we've got a lot of customers that need to print out, if, for example, if it's a thousand line order, they may need to print out a thousand case labels for shipping to a, a retailer, you know, and we may want to talk about the, the solution can be deployed both in the cloud and on premise. It's the exact same solution. So in those instances, we may recommend a, uh, a, um, an on-site deployment if you have a requirement to print out a significant amount of labels for your customer requirement, specifically your compliance labels. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a next question? I think you reviewed this, but I'm going to ask it anyhow. Do you have a pick route optim optimization? Yeah, so there's a few ways that we, we can handle that. Uh, by default, we do that by uh, a bin location sequence. So one of, the, one of the implementation tasks is to optimize the layout of your warehouse, and, and part and parcel is, is uh, naming your bin locations, and that's how the route optimization can be done. But then there's also some additional parameters and configurations that we have, like uh, that can re-optimize your picks based on things like you know heavy to light, as for example, for those that are in, in, in food and beverage. Thank you. Um, if uh, we don't have any other questions, this might be our last question, so I'll ask it if we have another question uh, come in. Uh, we'll certainly address that. Um, and the question is, since you support paper picking in a SaaS environment, how are you able to automatically print pick tickets without being behind the firewall? That's really just the, you know, how you set up your infrastructure in the warehouse. Uh, similar to how you would print something out through NetSuite, uh, you know, the same same would apply to the Excelis application. So it's really more of a, a uh, configuration of, of how your network's set up. Great. Thank you. Tons of great questions. This was very uh, interactive and uh, thoughtful Q&A um, session, and um, I want to thank all the uh, participants for asking uh, these great questions. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Nick Vanderheden and Zubair Amla, both of Acelos, for your presentation and your demo. I think it was a great presentation and very interesting uh, demo that shows the flexibility and customization of Acelos. Um, I want to thank all the NetSuite customers for attending. Um, please uh, visit the Suite app uh, archive of the webinar recordings. Um, if you, our next webinar is on December 4th with Nexania. The topic will be expense reports made easy, easy with Nexania. You'll receive a thank you email of, of this webinar. It'll include a link to the recording and uh, contact information with Acelos. So if you have any questions, uh, follow-up questions, or if you'd like to see a demo, please reach out to uh, Acelos and uh, schedule a, a demo with that with them. With that, I wish everyone a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.